good habits. So many that you can build up on a mountain bike, stuff like looking ahead and keeping your eyes up out of corners, keeping your elbows active and engaged, heels dropped and all that kind of thing makes a massive difference. However, there's a whole nother set of habits that I've tried to build up over the years that it's more about looking after myself, looking after my equipment and looking after the environment I'm riding in. So let's get straight to those. Something I try and stay on top of if I'm planning or I'm on a really demanding ride is eating sort of proper food, a mix of different food groups, complex carbs, solids, sandwiches, because I think if you get to a certain point of being too depleted, you, you can't replenish that again in a single meal, even if you feel full, and then you're not gonna get recovered again for the next few days. If you have an idea roughly how long you'll be out for, think about how many carbs that adds up to per hour, and then add up the snacks you've got, and make sure you bring enough. It's better to have too many than too little because they can always come home with you again. The next one is wear and tear on your bike parts. So I've seen Blake use the ABC mnemonic, which I thought was really clever and I'm gonna steal it, but with a twist. First one, A for air. Now, I don't check the PSI exactly for every single ride I do, but I do just give my tire a bit of a squeeze and make sure it hasn't gone down overnight or anything like that before I head out. Next up, B. Now, Blake said brakes. I'm gonna expand that to bolt check. Something that I like to do either just before I head out or maybe on the train to the trails is go over all the big things on the bike, your wheels, your crank bolts, make sure your gear cable's done up, your handlebars, stuff like that. Just nip them up and you don't get anything coming loose that you don't expect on the trails. Finally, C for chain. You want it nice and clean, lube properly for the riding conditions, but on top of that, if you can just remember and build a little habit in terms of checking it's not getting too worn out and stretched in order to wear out a cassette and that will save you a lot of money if you have to do both at the same time. This little tool measures the amount of stretch your chain has got because once it reaches a certain point it really rapidly accelerates the cassette wear and that means you could be replacing the whole drivetrain. Transport options can become habitual too, so stuff like lift sharing and taking the train, once you get into the swing of it, becomes easier and easier. Classic thing of being able to hop in with a buddy, really obviously saves you petrol money, saves carbon, it's fewer vehicles on the road, and it gives you more time to plan where you're going, chat about your ride, relive those near-death experiences, all from the safety of the van. Depending on where you are in the world, I know that public transport options can sometimes be limited. I've definitely been guilty recently of just jumping the car to get to the woods a bit more than maybe I feel like I should be doing, but it does save me a lot of time if I am on the train. It also gives me an option just to relax, chill out, maybe stay on top of admin emails, do a bolt check on my bike, fuel, and just have a bit of space between my life and riding. As a mountain biker, I love riding those fresh loam tracks in autumn. It's that perfect conditions where it's, it's, it's so much fun and really great for building skills. However, I do just want to mention the issue of sharing that woodland space with other critters. For example, in the south of the UK, we tend to share the sand of heathland areas with sand lizards, and they live on prime loam track habitat. So there's a tendency sometimes to sort of really pack runs into a small area and make the most of those conditions, but it will leave the lizards with, with nowhere to hide, nowhere to go. Oh man! Fresh load. Wow. <laughs> Whoa, dude! No! So I admit, like, yes, I'm riding loan tracks, but I'm maybe not scraping corners in everywhere, and I'm trying to stick to some of the tracks that are maybe already there. Just leave a bit of that Heathlands for the lizards to live in and uh, just maybe leaving some logs for the bugs, stuff like that, and just trying not to rinse an area of everything it's got. I guess the message here is wherever you are in the world, there are going to be other critters around and just to sort of have a bit of an idea about your trail impact on, on their homes. I'm as past as anyone to dropping out the bottom of the track feeling absolutely stoked and wanting to let everyone in the world know about it, but Having been on the other side of it, I kind of am aware of just how it comes across. When you're riding along, because of the wind, you're talking to someone, your voice naturally just creeps up in volume and it sounds normal to you, but for everyone else, it's very loud. 
Dude, how good was that track? So sick. Let's go for another lap. I don't want to come across as boring, but what prompted me to think about this habit was actually seeing a sign saying, cyclist, be quiet in a village. And uh, it made me really realize like how much you do shout to people you're riding with. So just think about that. Maybe keep it down, keep it respectful and focus on the bike riding. Building a habit, maybe right at the end of the ride for looking after your bike and not leaving it till you get home, I find really helpful for making the effort and making my bike last longer. At the end of a ride, either back in the car park or at home, I know exactly what I'm reaching for and what I'm doing in order to kind of just knock it out of the way, get it done, not worry about leaving dirt on my bike, letting it build up and solidify and then be a hassle to clean later. So I just, I get set up, I clean my bike and I get on with the rest of my day. I don't want to go crazy, but I'll just give the frame a quick wipe down. I might go over the seals and then I'll clean my drivetrain off to get rid of that grinding mud paste that really wears out your chain of cassette way faster. All of this boils down to really just taking a bit of care about yourself and your body, your bike, the environment and everyone else around. And it can become a habit and then you can just get on with enjoying riding a bike. So lecture over. I'm going to get riding. Let us know what you thought of this video in the comments and uh, see you next time. Ha ha ha!